Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to start this morning's service. Every please rise, even as we enter into a time of prayer. I'll start off with a scripture this morning, and then we'll enter into a time of prayer. Uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 38, the verse 18 to 19. Isaiah 38, 18 to 19. For the grave cannot praise you. Death cannot sing your praise. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. The living, the living, they praise you as I'm doing today. Parents tell their children about your faithfulness. Amen. The grave cannot testify of God's faithfulness. It is the living that can praise Him. And so as long as we have the breath of the Almighty, we need to give Him all the glory. When He calls us to eternity, we cannot testify of His faithfulness. It is now. It is now. God has been faithful in so many ways, especially this morning as we celebrate the month seven. God has seen him throughout this year, throughout the struggles, throughout the challenges. In all those moments, God has been faithful. And so this morning is about celebrating God, giving all glory unto him and thanking him. Amen. And so this morning, let's begin to thank God for his faithfulness. That God has been faithful unto us from our going and our coming in all this God has been there. Begin to thank God this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. Of a truth, you are a God. Lord, when things do not make sense unto us, when we do not understand and comprehend, oh God, in all this we say we give you glory. This morning we honor you, oh God. We say receive your worship this morning. We receive your honor this morning. We thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We declare that there is none like unto you, oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for the life of our children. We thank you for the life of our spouse, oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for our family. We thank you for our jobs. Lord, you have been through at all. And so this morning we say we thank you. We give you honor in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, that we are not being truthful. We admit. But then if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and even to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is sin that separates us from the things of God. And so this morning we're going to go through the throne of grace, the throne of mercy, and tell God that, Lord, we confess of our sins. We repent of our iniquity. Everything that will be a hindrance this morning, God, we lay before your altar that you will cleanse us. Begin to pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Oh, there is no need to pretend when we come before your presence. Because indeed you see right through us. You know our going and our coming, oh God. Every spirit of pride this morning we lay before you. Every spirit of past experience, oh God. We say, Lord, we lay every fleshly desire, oh God, unto you. The Lord, you will have your way this morning. We repent of every sin, oh God. We confess every sin, oh God. Known and unknown. The Lord, every hindrance. Every sin that the enemy will use against us. Every article of evidence that the enemy will use. This morning we pray that you will forgive us. We forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to pray and invite the Holy Spirit this morning to come into his presence, to come within us. That the Spirit of God will draw among us this morning. Without the Spirit of God, there's going to be a social gathering. But then we invite his presence to abide within us. That he will break every yoke, break every yoke, every plan of the enemy. The Spirit of God will take absolute control throughout the worship, with our instrument. Everything that we will do this morning will be according to his will. Let's begin to pray. Holy Spirit, we invite the presence of God. Oh, without you, oh God, we are just an empty vessel. And so we invite you to have your way this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That you will have your way, oh God. Have your way this morning. Have your way, O oh God. Holy Spirit, have your way, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. We give you glory. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Our final prayer. Then I'll, I'll hand over to the worship team. I read the second verse of a hymn, Captain of Israel's host. The second verse read, By thine unerring spirit lead, we shall not in the desert stray. The light of man's direction need or miss our providential way. As far from danger, as far from fear, while love, almighty love, is near. Throughout this year, the Spirit of God has been with the man servant, the unerring Spirit of God. As far from fear, as far from danger, God has been faithful in all. I said, once again, we're going to go, I said, we'll commit Minister Hughes and the family into God's hands. That God himself, who have started with him, will finish with him. And then he will finish well. God will declare unto him, good and faithful servant, that the reward that is deemed him, God will reward to him. Begin to pray. Yado ze li pedeke debede ada ha. Ata zudi hande le beze, badu zi katada ha. Le pado zande li hande li biha. Ye teke te de beze di ada handa la ba ha. Holy Spirit, oh God, we commit your man servant, oh God, into you this morning. We pray that you will have your way in his life, oh God. You who have started with him, oh God, may you perfect that which concerns him. Every reward that is due, oh God, you are a God who diligently, oh, reward who, those who seek you. And so we pray that, Lord, may you cannot cash out his reward. May your reward, oh God, be faithful unto him, oh God, that you will show forth your glory unto him, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, our strength, thy grace, Sing our strength. You never did. Ha ha. host and God of all who seek the land of thy shadow of sing that cloud
your way this morning and your presence oh god will come among your people we thank you oh god that you will have your way oh god lord begin to move in your own people in the name of jesus we give you glory we honor you in jesus name amen to god be the glory to god
my hands and say, I love you.
Lobogotonari and the Lema Katanari and the Leba Katanari and the Solo Bogotonari and we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rakata Bogotonari and the Inna Rebotonari and the Mereba Katanari and the Solo Bogotonari and the We thank you, 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 we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. At this time, I want us to pray. Committing Minister Hughes into God's care. Even as we experience this celebration, we believe the Lord has more for him. We want to pray the supernatural anointing of God upon his life. The desires of his heart, we pray that God will, will fulfill that he will be a fruitful vine even in his old age. We want to pray that God will reveal mysteries unto him during this phase of his life, shall we pray. Ratabrokotonari and alomogotonari and I will pray, my Lord, committing my Lord into your care, your servant, my Lord, Minister Hughes, my Lord. We pray, my Lord, Heavenly Father, you continue to increase him, my Lord, Heavenly Father. Your purposes concerning his life, my Lord, will come to pass, my Lord. That which my Lord have been, Father, you still have for him, my Lord. He would experience it, my Lord. Have like Simeon, my Lord, you'll be a fruitful vine, my Lord. In his old age, my Lord, we pray, my Lord, that you would bless him indeed, my Lord. The plans of the enemy, my Lord, against my Lord, his life, my Lord, will come against him. Rakata Blotonadi, and I will pray, my Lord, that you will touch him, my Lord. That you know, my Lord, the desire of his heart, my Lord. That we will pray, my Lord, your visitation, my Lord, upon him, my Lord. We pray your visitation upon him. That we pray your visitation, my Lord. That we pray that you will increase him. That you will increase him with favor. We will increase him with favor, my Lord. That he will walk strong, my Lord, in times like this, my Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray, my Lord, your blessings. Your blessings, my Lord, upon his life. We pray your blessings upon his family. We pray your blessings upon his family. And it intent of the wicked one will not come to pass, my Lord. We pray, my Lord, that you cause him to inherit his possessions, my Lord. Heavenly, we pray, my Lord, that you anoint him, my Lord, in a different dimension. Rakata Blotonari and the Lokoto Blotonari and the Lebotonari. We pray, my Lord, your blessings, my Lord. We pray your blessings. We pray your blessings, my Lord, upon his life. We pray your blessings upon his life. We pray your blessings upon his life. That we pray your visitation. Rakata Blotonari and the we know, my Lord, you are God, you will do it. Rata Blotonada, we know, my Lord, you will do it. Rata Blotonadi and the Lebakatanadi, Lobotonadi, that you know, my Lord, the cry of his heart, the cry of his heart. We pray, my Lord, that you will touch him one more time. You will touch him one more time. We know, my Lord, that you will do it. We thank you, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are so praying. Last year, our senior pastor, formerly retired, now we are seeing Minister Hughes. A new generation is coming up. We don't want it to be said that after these retired, the church is down. But I want to pray that now, the anointing will increase than ever. When Elijah left, a double portion was given to Elijah. The territories Moses was not able to, Joshua did accomplish. We pray that that will be the story of this church, my Lord. Pray that special anointing will be given to Pastor Francis. We pray that the church would cover grounds. Shall we pray? Rata bloko to nadi anda loko to bloko to nadi anda leba kata nadi anda. We pray, my Lord, come to the church, my Lord, have bring Father into your care, my Lord. We pray, my Lord, that you cause my Lord this church, my Lord, to increase, my Lord, have bring Father. We pray, my Lord, the church will work strong, my Lord. Some of doing, my Lord, that we are not able to take, my Lord. We pray, my Lord, that next time, my Lord, we will take it, my Lord. We pray, my Lord, that double portion, my Lord, have bring Father now, my Lord. We pray, my Lord, that like the plans of the enemy against this church, my Lord, shall not come to pass, my Lord. We pray, my Lord, that this church, my Lord, will grow, my Lord. This church, my Lord, will expand, my Lord. This church, my Lord, will have favor, my Lord. This 
charge my Lord, who will throw my Lord and blood. But it will be like a magnet, my God, in the neighborhood. As 30 people near and far, my Lord. As 30 people near and far, my Lord. We pray that we shall not increase, my Lord, in number, my Lord. But we shall increase in spiritual growth, my Lord. We pray, my God, that we will experience your anointing, my Lord. Your anointing, my God, in the different dimension, my Lord. Have to find if you ask, my Lord, the love of many, my God, the good Father, we pray for my Lord. That it shall not be so, my Lord. It shall not be so. It shall not be so. It shall not be so. But this church, my Lord, will increase in anointing. This church, my Lord, will increase in favor. We know, my Lord, we will do it. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. 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 Shall we be seated? Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give a round of applause for Jesus. Amen. You excited to be in the house of the Lord? Give a wave of shout and praise to the Almighty God. Amen. Today is a special day. Hallelujah. Well, I'd like to welcome you to Church of the Living God of North Virginia. Amen. And our pastor... It's Pastor Francis Jima. Amen? He also goes by the name Innocent. And believe me, he sure is an innocent man. Hallelujah! <laughs> and his lovely wife, Lady Erica Jima. A round of applause for them. Amen? Hallelujah! We give glory to God. Amen? And there is no better place to be on Sundays but the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And David said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Now, on my right here, we got our retired Pastor K.O. Jima. Amen. And his beautiful wife, Mrs. Elizabeth Jima. Give a round of applause for them. Amen. They are back in the pastor with wisdom and with experience. Hallelujah. So we give, we give glory and we thank God for their lives. Amen. So this morning, I'm sure you have clues as to why we are here. Amen. Do you have any clue? All right. So instead of me saying it, I'm going to show it to you. Hallelujah. May we rise on our feet and with a clap offering... Let us thank God for the life of Minister Hughes. Hallelujah. Amen. With a shout and praise for what the Lord has done. We give glory. Amen. God bless you for your faithfulness. Amen. For all you have done for the kingdom of God. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have a lot to go through today. But I'd probably like to take this time to play a little game. Amen? We didn't come to play games, but I want us to relax a little bit. Hallelujah? The word of God is going to be preached. You be fed. Amen? That's the most important part, right? So let us not catch you sleeping. You be up. Hallelujah? We thank God. So with this, I'm going to start with that. And sister, if you are, you're going to help me. I'm going to ask this question. Who knows Minister Hughes' favorite food? I need a hand up, then I'll take an answer. Amen? What do you think? And there's a big present for you. Amen? What is Minister Hughes' favorite food? Go ahead, Auntie. Uh, it's a good try. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, that too is not part. I, I, I saw. Uh, go ahead. Banku, give a round of applause. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry, sorry, Aldo, too. I think you know all the answers, so I wouldn't have called you. You've written it down. Amen. So we give glory to God. Hallelujah. You got your present, right? Amen. Thank the committee members, because we put a lot together. Hallelujah. So with that, before I even invite 
the next person coming in, I want to give a shout out to the committee that put this together. Hallelujah. May we rise. I got Auntie Aggie, Auntie Melody, Sister Fia. We got our Sister Priscilla. We got all the group. Amen. Sister Raffine. Give a round of applause for the beautiful place. Amen. Auntie Blessing. And all the work that has been done. Brother Jed with the accounting team. Amen. If somebody does something, they deserve to be recognized. And that's a recognition. And that includes me as well. So a round of applause. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're going to start off with the program. And I'm going to call upon our brother. Um, brother. Okay, before I say this, right. There is nobody that knows Mr. Hughes any better than his wife. Amen. Because the wife of how many years, Mrs. Hughes? Zip up. <laughs> Amen. So nobody besides Minister Hughes' wife, Mrs. Ted Doyomu, Emmanuel Doyomu, to come and give your dad's um, biography. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Give a round for him. Thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to go right into uh, reading the biography of my dad. Minister Hughes Nyakote Ted Daimbo was born on November 7th, 1946, in Adapra, Accra, to the late Mr. Hugh Tay Daimbo and Miss Carol Ikoa Chairman. He graduated from Suhum College of Civil Engineering and Building Governorship in 1969. He joined the Department of Social Welfare and further wrote in Accra as a Joint Officer Assistant in 1970. To further his career, he completed a refresher course at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and was transferred to Tamale as a tech Technical Officer in 1975. He's converting. On a bus ride returning from one of his vacations from Accra to Tamale in 1978, Minister Ted Dayumu met a man who ch ch changed his life around. As the bus was refueling halfway through the journey to Tamale, all passengers got out of the bus for short break. During the break, Minister was smoking and the man sitting right next to him on the bus asked if he was a Christian. Minister responded, anyway. And that prompted a man to minister to him. When all the passengers got on the bus, the same man continued to minister to him. In an attempt to throw out his cigarette pack, the man asked the minister to give all 19 sticks of the cigarette and prayed with him. By the instruction of the man he met on the bus, he advised him to pray every night. For about two years, Minister Ted Daimo will wake up at 2 a.m. every morning to pray and sing the song, Master Speak, Thy Servant Hear It. As he continued to seek the face of the Lord, Minister Ted Daimo had a vision similar to Jacob's ladder, where the Lord was descending with angels and in the middle of the ladder blowing trumpets. At the same time as the vision, he also heard a voice calling him three times, and Minister responded, saying, Master Speak, Thy Servant Hear It. The Lord spoke to him to quit smoking, playing lottery, and also not to marry the woman he was courting at that time. And then the courtship was a very difficult task to do, but he continued to ask God to help him with all the things he had spoken to him. Minister joined the Tamale Methodist singing band and also the choir. God revealed to him that the first name of his future wife would be Agnes. He saw himself getting married in Tamale Methodist sorry, in Mamprobi Methodist Church. In 1980, Minister was transferred to Accra where he started attending Mamprobi Methodist Church and met Agnes, just as the Lord revealed to him in Tamale. In 1982, <laughs> in 1982, God minister, in 1982, God gave Minister the scripture, Jeremiah chapter 1. He ordered him to go out and start Don Broadcast Ministry. The ministry later grew to about 10 members in which two of them later became pastors. God opened the door for Minister Ted Daimu to relocate to the United States in 1990 when he joined the Church of the Living God, Highsville, Maryland. 
After a month of joining the church, he joined the choir and later Pastor K. Ojima asked him to, te- to teach the primary class. About 1996, the, church, the Nova branch was formed. He joined the new location. He served as a deacon, a member of the church's visitation team, and continued to teach the primary class. After completing his studies at World Ministry Bible College, Nisa continued to work as Sunrise Assisted Living as Metec. In 2005, he received a divine instruction to quit his job at Sunrise and join the church's ministry full-time. While at home praying, God revealed to him that in the month of April, Minister Ted Doyemu will have a new position with the church, and the man of God will call him about the opportunity a week before April. Minister also continued with his duties as a deacon and primary class teacher. Exactly a week before April, Reverend K. Ojima called him and offered him the opportunity to work with him at the church. <laughs> this confirmed what God had revealed to him about five months before. Minister Ted Doimu serves as a presbytery board member and performs baby naming. For some time, he led Bible studies and prayer sessions twice a week at Cold Pepper. Currently, he continues to co lead Friday evening prayer meetings. Sunday morning opening prayers and a memo of morning and afternoon intercessory prayers. God has been good to minister with God has been good to minister with a loving and a supportive wife, Mama Agnes Ter Dayumo. We thank God for these forty two years of service, the Lord, and we pray for more grace and good health as he retires. Happy retirement, Minister Ter Dayumo, and may God bless you. Amen. Um So um, this week, there's been one song on my heart that um, whenever I pray, it comes and it's in the local dialect. Um, you know I don't sing, so bear with me. Amen. Kaboyo. <laughs> afraid and don't be dismayed for my righteous right hand is always with you amen you're gonna let us all cry Emmanuel God bless you amen there's a saying going that goes that retirement doesn't mean that you stop working amen Especially retirement in the Lord means you spend more time with the Lord so you can share with other people what you learn about the Lord. Amen? So it's not a retirement. It's a celebration for the next chapter in this life. Amen? (laughs) Hallelujah. And I'll say one more thing as the Sunday school um, gets ready for their tribute. If you want to know what retirement is, I want you to look at Pastor K. Ojima. Amen? He's retired, but every time he say, I am retired. 
That's his first statement before he does any work. I'm retired, but hey, I'm here. You know, <laughs> Amen? <laughs> it goes to show the minister, you're going to be here. Amen? Amen. And you're still going to serve. Hallelujah. So we give glory to God. Uh, we're now going to invite the Sunday school um, team to come and give their tribute. Amen? Hallelujah. A round of applause for them. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. All the time. God is good. I'm excited. I don't know how about you, but I am excited. And I'm excited most uh, importantly for the month of April. I love the month of April. I'm so excited. I don't know about you. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> I love April. Amen. God is good. Daddy Hughes. God is good. God is good. God has been good. Amen. Amen. We are here uh, on behalf, I'm here on behalf of the Sunday School uh, Department. I didn't even know recently that is when I learned you were a Sunday School teacher for years ago. Before we even, even you know, started coming to this church and being Sunday School teachers. So, Thank you for opening the door. Thank you for leading. I know some of your students are still here and they appreciate you because I asked and they were telling me so many things. God bless you. We are here as a department, a Sunday school department, to just appreciate you, to say we love you for all the work that you've done. It was not in vain. Because some of them that you thought are now teachers. Amen? So we give God that glory. So I will... And some are ministers, you see? So God is good. So we are going... Uh, okay, that is said, Linda is one of them. And I know uh, Amy is one of them. And a couple of them too. So we thank God for you, for all that you do. Uh, for the church, for all that you do for individuals. Uh, we are going to call the first primary to come and pay a tribute to you. And we say thank you for all that you've done. Amen. Hallelujah. Before the children perform, I met Ms. Minister Hughes at my sister's house when I took the children to visit. And on that visit, there was a nice, funny story, but I'm not sharing with you guys. Um, between me and Mr. Hughes, right? <laughs> Amen. To share it, we don't have time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, Minister, we are so proud of you. To me personally, your retirement is partial to me, okay? Because you are an essential product for this ministry. You are. And even though you are going, you are, we need your input. Still, is needed here. Amen? May God bless you. Continue to give you wisdom as you pray and keep on praying for us. Having said that, the children has a couple of things to show you, your favorite. Amen.
Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The first primary class is here today to honor Minister Hughes for 18 plus years to God and the Church of the Living God. Minister Hughes, may God continue to bless you with long life and good health, and you may serve him all your days. We wish you a happy retirement. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. like we have some chorus that's in the house. Amen? Yes, We're switching things up a little bit. Um, Sister Amy and uh, the rest of the team are going to give a tribute for former Sunday school students. Amen? <laughs> Where some are pastors, some are ministers, from what uh, Pastor Jim has said, right? So let's welcome Sister Amy before the choir give us their wonderful tribute. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to call all of Minister Hughes' former Sunday school students. Many are not here, but many are here, so we give God glory. is good and all the time hallelujah all right so we kind of organized ourselves because how could we have a retirement celebration without giving honor to our former teacher who we've spent so much time with along the years minister Hughes and I go all the way back to he's, he's known me before I was born but <laughs> but I was so privileged to have sat under Minister Hughes at, at CLG Maryland all the way to Electronic Drive, all the way through. God knows, I didn't even know that some of these students were also, I didn't know you were teaching that long. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we would like to just give a quick tribute. They gave us five minutes. Um, not all of us are gonna speak, but we just wanted to uh, share just a few words um, some of us share a few words uh, just to give um, honor to our minister. So I will just start. We know Minister Hughes to wear many hats in the ministry, right? An evangelist, a prayer warrior, a preacher, and many more. But to us, Minister Hughes was our Sunday school teacher. To sit under Minister Hughes' Sunday school class meant that we should come to class prepared. If he gave you homework, you better do your homework. And when they call time for class, you better be ready. Don't talk, sit down, be prepared, Bibles open, notebooks, 
<laughs> everything there. Be prepared. Um, be also be prepared to learn a new a new song. We're, if you sit under Minister Hughes, be prepared to learn a new song. He's gonna share a Sunday school lesson, and we are going to memorize a Bible verse. And Minister Hughes had a crafty way of uh, helping us to learn our memory verses. One thing about Minister Hughes is he loves music. <laughs> music is his thing when he's praying. He's also singing when he's preaching. That's his thing. So he would share the memory verse. We would repeat it. And before you know it, everybody is dancing the memory verse. And then we've all memorized this. So we give glory to God for giving you wisdom to share uh, memory verses with us. To this day, sometimes I'll be in the kitchen and I'll be singing the memory verses uh, that I learned back in those days. So thank God for your life. So um, I won't say too much, uh, but uh, we had so much fun in class, but I cannot neglect that Minister Hughes had a passion, has a passion for salvation and encouraged everyone to have a personal relationship with God. He was sure to relate the Sunday school lesson to our everyday lives to help us to understand it. Uh, so I'll just wrap up to say, Minister Hughes, may God bless you for your many, many, many years of service to him through this church, through other churches, through the community, through families, and, and I can go on and on, but may God bless you with long life, good health, and may he reward you and your entire family, your friends, your community, for all the years of service that you have sacrificed for us. God bless you. And Mama, thank you for allowing him to spend all the time that he has spent with us. And God bless you too, and your entire family. All right. So, um, my name is Ivan. Uh, <laughs> um, when they call someone to say something regarding a tribute, um, usually that person thinks of maybe one or two words uh, to congratulate a person for their retirement. Um, when my sister asked me to do this, it was easy for me to think of just one word. The one word is passion. If anybody knows Minister Hughes, and I'm, let me do this. Before Minister Hughes, it was Uncle Hughes. Um, me and my sister back in the 90s used to go to his house, and I don't know if he remembers, but he would babysit us. <laughs> Five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, he was our babysitter. And when we were going to church in Hyattsville, uh, he, you know, he was our teacher too. And um, one thing that I always realized from almost 30 years ago is the type of passion that he instills, whether it's in his kids that he's teaching or the congregation. Um, and I know in his teaching days, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not telling on you, but I'm gonna tell on you. <laughs> his tactics were a little bit different. Um, I know that you know when we would sit back there and we weren't doing what we were supposed to do, while he was teaching, some of us will see some chalk fly by or an eraser fly by and target somebody. But that really told you, you know, hey, you know, we need we need all of your discipline, all of your attention. And um, it's, so one thing I do know is that Minister Hughes or Uncle Hughes to me will forever be the, the type of passion that we all need to move on, to move forward. Um, even though he's retiring, I know that passion that he's given out the past 30 years for me will still be here. And so thank you, Minister Hughes, for all that you have done. And I appreciate and I bless, I bless you for everything because I know retirement isn't easy for a lot of people because you're not gonna be as accessible. But you'll still be here, just like uh, Brother Prince said. You'll still be here in our midst, hopefully. So thank you. Appreciate it. Uncle Hughes, we just want to say thank you. Um, 
I was part of the class uncle mentioned, Linda, uh, Rachel, all of the, the ones you call it, Linda and Cole. Um, we would sit there and we would talk and we would get in trouble. We say, Linda and Cole, Rachel and Cole, you know. We thank you for your firmness because you instilled the word of God in us. Um, you and Auntie AC and you guys used to have these felt um, Bible stories and you would, as Linda said, you would make the word of God come to life. And because you did that, the word of God stays within it, within us. Um, there's one song I remember we sang in class. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against thee. That I will not sin, that I will not sin. Thy word have I hid in my heart. We thank you, Uncle Hughes, because you have instilled the word of God in our hearts. Amen. Can we just give it up for Minister Hughes one more time? Do you all see him in the glasses on the, okay? Minister Hughes or Uncle Hughes is the coolest, one of the coolest uncles, okay? The coolest. He'll always be asking, do you have my number? Or do you have any questions? And one day I was like, you know what? Let me double check I have his number. I did. And I decided to call him, and it happened to be on his 78th birthday. And I said, wow, I, sh I need to you know, continue to call him just randomly and see what blessings happen. But um, Minister Hughes, there are so many memories that were just flooding my head this week. And I was just so appreciative of how much he has been able to support the youth, be with them, and have so many memories. And just like Amy had said, um, in our Sunday school classes and songs. The reason why all of us here know the first four books of the New Testament is because of Minister Hughes. And we would repeat, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Over and over again, and it was embedded in my head. Um, and there were other memories. I remember I was looking in the church directory this week, and I came across the baptism pictures, and I had remembered that Minister Hughes was the one to call me and reassure me of my salvation and going forth and, and getting baptized. Because I remember I, I talked to him and I was like, Mr. Hughes, I don't know, I don't know if this is genuine, if I really, if I'm ready. And he called me randomly just to reassure me. And that is the type of thoughtfulness that Minister Hughes has. And he's so caring and loving and Everything, every adjective that you can describe that is so well, that is what Minister Hughes embodies. And so I just want to let you know that all the small things, just the firm handshakes and, you know, just checking up on us after, after um, service, it doesn't go unnoticed. And we love you so much. And we are so happy to know you and to support you and be here celebrating you. So thank you so much, Minister Hughes. Happy retirement, Minister Hughes. Um, I wasn't in Sunday school class with really any of you guys, but um, <laughs> um, some of my earliest memories are from Bible study um, at the train station in Culpeper. Um, uh, but if there's anything that's really stuck with me most, it's actually when I started driving. Um, and I've been driving for like about eight years now. Um, but when I got my first car and I was uh, driving to school, um, I remember having a conversation with you and you just stressing the importance of praying before hitting the road um, and soaking the vehicle into the Lord's hands. Um, and since that day, um, it's been a habit of mine. And I just want to thank God because I've never even gotten in an accident. I've never even gotten a ticket, really. Um, and so I pray that <laughs> I pray that that continues. Um, and I just want to thank God for your life. and all your service and, and like I've been said, the passion that you've um, had for serving the Lord all these years. So we thank you um, and God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, we are not done yet. Me, I was not in any of the class, but I was the favorite student. You guys are not loud enough. I said I was not in any of the class, but I was the favorite student. Amen, amen. I want to tell you a story. I remember back in the day, we used to come to Friday night prayer. And one day, 
Minister Hughes was preaching. I call him Numwe. Anytime I call him Numwe, say Robert Numwe Shiane. For those of you who understand, you understand. Amen. And Minister Hughes came and said, Today he was in prayer and the Lord gave him a song. And then he began to sing. Oh, hallelujah. Praise Jehovah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Praise Jehovah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then you stand and say, one more time, one more time. Oh, hallelujah. Praise Jehovah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, but I, I was standing back then as everybody was giving a testimony. There was a song that dropped in my heart. Until I'm almost done. Don't yell at me. Watch out, for the last time. The more ajobu, wa ne kono ne yabuabu, the Jesus bami. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. What what are you marching? Amen. What are you marching? Naga kele. I know. Then naga kele. Are you ready? Okay. So the choir next. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I knew Minister Hughes from 1987. When Calvary Baptist Church Choir landed in Maryland. I heard nine choir members came and we hosted a lot of them. And the singing, my God, the singing, that choir was phenomenal. That's where I met Minister Hughes. So he's been doing this for a long time. And one of his favorite stuff is worship. He loves worship songs. So today, this afternoon, we're going to honor the Lord with worship. Amen.
Jehovah. 247. 247. I will pray. I will pray your holy name. Sing 247. 247. Oh, I will praise you. I will praise you, Jehovah.
So this is my story. And this is
to praise, ask the Spanish pastors today to be patient and maybe they can set up some chairs at the parking lot and fellowship. Oh, I've asked God to put a magnet on the seat. You can move. This is our home. This is our bathroom. This is our kitchen. We want to do anything we want to do. Hallelujah. We want to celebrate this my body. Hallelujah. Oh, if you want to hear some good news about him, come downstairs. This morning, I'm here to introduce the speaker. Rabba Kashandelele. 1995 to be precise, on my way coming home from Straightway Apostolic Church, Beaver Heights, my African-American church. Simple prayer, Almighty God, I have served you faithfully as you know for 13 years. Five children driving through Woodrow Wilson Bridge. Lord, is it possible? Now we have Pastor Champon Church in Virginia. Lord, is it possible that you make a way so that I can join them? That was my prayer. Immediately, I drove to my driveway. My wife told me there's a one brother from Ghana on the telephone. I pick up the phone. He said, where well, I am, Pastor Kwame. Do you remember some time ago, I met you at the funeral? I said, oh, yes, 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 yes. I do remember you. While he was talking, he said, well, I would like us to maybe start something. I said, oh, no, no, no. I am a deacon at my African-American church. I can't do that, my brother. No. Then I asked God. Just as I am coming, I'm praying this prayer. There is it the devil who wants to trick me. Then I said, my brother, give me some time. And I went before the almighty God, fasting and prayer. I didn't return his call. For many months, I one day took the church secretary, Sister Elaine Carter, and the head of our Deccan board, Deccan George Hollis, we went to the pastor's office. He said, Pastor, I've met an African, a young man who has come from our country. He wants us to start something in Virginia. So with your permission and blessing, I would like to ask you if I can go. Oh, no, 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 the king told you can't do that. <laughs> However, if the almighty God says so, go. But when you go and things don't go well, come back home. This morning, that's how I met Pastor Kwame Frimpong. Today, he's here to minister to us. I call him Joshua. He was Tai Doyomo. Somebody will say, why do you call him Joshua? He was Tai Doyomo. Among all the people, 25 and more people that we started, we three or four people started in my home. I call myself Caleb. Two of us are still here. Um, maybe my younger sister. Joshua Hills, Tei Doyomo, my body, 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 may the almighty God, 29 years ago, who brought us together, remember you and your family. And somebody will ask a question, Brother P.Y. Why, Brother Amos, why didn't you go with Pastor Kwame? When there was a commotion, every year you all hear Pastor Kwame when they are reading the church history. Oh, General Kewo, you have done well. General, and I'm sharing with you 
The reason why, when he told me, no, no, I must, let's go together. Don't go and join them at Maryland. I say, I fear God. I say, I'm scared. Pastor Kwame, I'm scared. Pastor Kwame, I'm so fearful. I fear God. I can't go with you. But you will always be my brother. I will help you both spiritually and financially. I will help you. But to go with you for what God has shown me, oh, I know maybe I won't stay long. This is what God showed me, people of God. If you want to bring the first one, please. I haven't said nothing to him before. No, I have I said to General K.O. before, no. I just want to share. God show me. I was holding it. Say, no, 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 I won't let this thing fall, this thing break. I was holding it. Then the boys came. People showed the second one. In a dream, God show me. Then God show me, go and be with Pastor Jeremy. That's the reason. He said, God, I said, I don't understand why the small one, I should leave the small one. He said, leave Pastor Kwame and go and join the bigger one. But Pastor Kwame is here. Since 1995, we have always been good friends. And his wife is here. This morning, Pastor Francis, a day will come. Three prophecies at the hotel. African-American woman, not a Ghanaian. I say, how can that be? He said, you don't believe me, Mr. Amos. I say, no. At Electronic Drive, this individual is sitting down right here. He's scared. I won't mention your name. I have never mentioned your name. I a day will come. You can take it or reject it. The same one who say you're a good man. They will come against you. When they come against you, why are you supposed to leave? You are the pastor here. If they don't like your preaching, Pastor, ask me. I will go and hide 40 footer container and I will bring it and I will pay for their load so that they can take it. Not you to live. Erica, don't forget. Oh, <laughs> don't forget. I told you, General, in a few months I came to your home, I give you a scripture. This afternoon, Oh, I thank God. All my three friends are here. I have five good friends. Brother Doyomo, Brother Asante, and Charles Quartin. He's my partner. That one, he and I, we talk about any and everything. Even if they deny us, if our wives deny us, we talk about it. That's how close that one, he and I. I will ask him, I say, did you get lucky? <laughs> oh, ask him, I will. We are very, very close. Very close. That one there, he and I, very, we talk about any and everything. And the wife too, he knows. <laughs> this afternoon here, Dr. Kwame Frimpon, PhD, a relationship expert, nationally certified counselor, a mental health a Lancet professional counselor and a family therapist with special emphasis on sexual intimacy, mental health. Dr. Kwame earned his PhD degree in counselor education with supervision of Liberty University. Currently, Professor Kwame teaches at different schools, Montreal University, North Carolina, Pentecostal Theological Seminar, 
the Church of God, Tennessee, and All Nations University, Ghana, West Africa. He is an associate pastor at All Nations Church, Atlanta, Georgia, under the leadership of Bishop Frank Ofosu Apia. He is the author of the book, Finding Him and Finding Her. Oh, the young ladies that are looking for him and the young men that are looking for her. Oh, get that book. Ooh, get that book. Finding him and finding her. I already found mine, so. <laughs> My labor say. A practical guide from Christian dating and a founder of Let's Love Right. A Christian coaching platform that empowers people to love right, date right, and marry where. You love right. Oh, wow. How wow, that young man is taking you out there, you date right. Then you get married where. General K.O. and Mama, my beautiful Mama, they celebrate 58 years. That is Mary right, General. Mary Wright. That's what he said. He's a trained sex therapist and palm addiction therapist. Oh my God. He palm addiction therapist. Palm addiction therapist. And founder and CEO of Let's Love Right. Since 1989, Pastor Kwame has been a full-time ministry teaching extensively in Africa, Europe, and the United States. Hundreds of individuals and families have been benefited from both his pastoral and family counseling work. Kwame Frimpon TV ministry breakthrough today has been since has been seen in 200 countries and one million homes in the U.S. through the World TV Network. His upbeat motivational message includes four books, The Healing of the Heart, Overcoming Offenses. It is not your fault. Breakthrough to the rear you. Fifteen laws of breakthrough and eat the colors stop the killers. Oh, everyone needs to get that book. You see, Brother Amos, you see that I have lost. I eat the colors. <laughs> Which has blessed many and continue to be a blessing. Dr. Kwame and his wife Mary just celebrated 30 years of marriage and are blessed <laughs> with three wonderful daughters, Esther, Edna, and Gloria, people of God, I'm here this afternoon to introduce you and to present to others the next Max Moreau and T.D. Jakes of West Africa, Dr. Kwame Frimpong, my own brother. Oh, we're standing ovation, standing ovation. standing place. Shall we keep standing? Let's, let's put our hands together and thank God for Pastor Jima and Mrs. Jima and Pastor Francis and Mrs. Han. Let's thank God. I appreciate them right now. Let's appreciate that. We salute you so much for the work done. Amen. Let me say that. And my good friend, Mr. Amos, too. I appreciate you. So let's thank God for his life. Mr. Amos, M Mr. Hughes, please take your seat. Take your seat, everyone. I want to thank the church the leadership for inviting me. Uh, but before I start, I also want to appreciate, I see old faces. 
Rachel is here. Hallelujah to God. Mr. Doku. And I mean, all the names, you know, I hardly re remember women's names because they change their hair, do so much that sometimes it's, sometimes it's black, yellow, thing like that. It's very difficult. But I see all kinds of faces here. Let's thank God for old faces. Let's thank God for your life. What a mighty blessing today. Hallelujah. It's always good to be back home, Pastor Jima. Let's thank God for our life. I, I'm, I'm just so blown away. Always when I come back home, it's a blessing. I also want to appreciate, I have my colleague who is, has become my family friend, um, Dr. Jefferson and her sister, Dr. Can we stand to your feet, please? Let's, work, let's welcome them and thank God for their life so very much. Dr. Jefferson is my department chair at Church of God, Tennessee uh, Theological Bible College. I want to recommend the school to you. You will be blessed. And th that is what I teach also. And when I was coming here, she said, I'm going to come and support you. Let's thank God for her life so one more time. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you so much. Amen. Finally, my girlfriend. Let's thank God for my wife now. Hallelujah to God. Amen to God. Hallelujah. 30 years of God's faithfulness. It will be 31 years in August. We met when we were about 17 years old, Miss Amos. And we've been on the journey up to date. Thank God, girlfriend. Amen. Thank God for your life. Amen to God. I'm not going to take your time too long. <laughs> so today, as we celebrate my good friend, Minister Hughes. Minister Hughes, I appreciate you, man of God. Thank God for his life. And my sis, God bless you so much. Amen. Today, we are just celebrating God. Amen. It's all about celebrating the goodness of God. So, I want to share today on the subject, celebrating the faithfulness of God. Amen? Celebrating the faithfulness of God. Just last week, I went to a, a church to preach. When I came back home, I couldn't find my app, iPad. Can you imagine, <laughs> Pastor Francis, you know, celebrating the faithfulness of God. And I would like us to read our Bibles from Genesis chapter number 37. Genesis 37. So if you are there, say amen. Genesis 37. I want to make sure that all of us open to Genesis 37. I want to begin from verse number 12 all the way to verse 18, and I read Genesis 37. Okay, so let's read together. Ready, go. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Sech Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, as you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, go and see if all is well with your brothers and with their flocks and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? Stay right there. Today I just want you to ask your neighbor, what are you looking for? Amen? One more time, ask them, what are you looking for? Okay, keep going, number 16. He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. Okay, let's also read Lamentation 3 and verse number 20. Lamentation 3 
and verse 20. Today we are celebrating the goodness of our God. Amen. So let's read Lamentation 3 and verse number 20. We want to wait and see if they can pull it up. Okay. Let's read together. At verse 20, maybe and 21. So ready, go. I will remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Keep going. Next verse. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So if you are making notes, I'd like you to write this theme, celebrating the faithfulness of our God. Amen. That's all I'd like you to write. But I also want us to give you a subtitle. Subtitle. So first theme is celebrating the faithfulness of God. But the subtitle is celebrating people God brings in our lives. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Jima, <laughs> celebrating people God does what? Brings into our lives. If you look at life carefully, you will see that life has a lot of issues. Everybody got issues. I know that we come to church and we are well-dressed and we sing and we are powerful, but we go home, some of us cry all night. Some issues are marital issues. Some have dating. They can't find whom to marry. Anyway, one of my job descriptions is I deliver love. I am a delivery driver and I deliver love. I have all kinds of pickup trucks and warehouses that I pick up and I deliver love. Hallelujah to God. That's the work I do. Amen? So if I meet you and you are looking for a woman, I can find you a man. If you look a man, I can find a woman. So that you can date well, love right and do what? And marry well. Amen to God. That's one of the things that I do. Hallelujah to God. But life, if you take a good look at life, you see two things. First, you see that there's a lot of troubles in life. A lot of troubles that just show up. Sometimes it's sickness. Sometimes it's just transitional challenges. Like Minister Hughes is transitioning from working in the church to now retiring. And sometimes you don't know what life has after that. And some people, somebody just break up. Just it's a, you, Somebody who's going to marry you will drop you off and pick up somebody else. Other times, it's a job situation where you can't find a job. Or sometimes it's a sickness. That One of the things that I, don't, I, I hate about Adam and Eve, one thing I hate about Adam and Eve is not because they ate the fruit. But one thing I hate about the Amos is that we grow old. I, 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 I don't tell me, brother Amos. <laughs> In fact, I hate the word old. I really hate it. If it wasn't for Adam and Eve, by this time, I would still be in the daycare. I'm, I'm actually sly on the diaper. Can you imagine? Now, my parents are looking for a day school for me to go. I'm crying, Mama, 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 I want to go to school. Because Adam and Eve were living long. And African people say it's, 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 it's apple tree. This apple tree hasn't called you. This apple tree has not mentioned your name. What do you eat, Adam? What do you eat, this, this apple tree? Put all of us into this mess up. And sometimes your waist. Sometimes it's your eyes. Sometimes it's your, your, your teeth. Sometimes it's, I'm just tired. <laughs> but Adima, the day we see Adam, I have only one question for him. We should slap Adam. Ah, we have all kinds of trees in the garden. Why did you eat this tree and all of us, by the age of 100, everybody's about to go home? But those days, when you're 100 years old, you are like in the daycare. <laughs> you're in the daycare. So we have all types of issues. When you take a good look at the faithfulness of God, you see that if you can scan, if you can do a scan in your life and you look at God's faithfulness, 
on one hand, you see a lot of troubles. But on the other hand, you see the faithfulness of God. And when you look at God's faithfulness, one thing that you see that God is faithful is the people God brought in your life. At a critical point, hey, Kalababa Santa Kayane, at the critical point in your life, God will bring people. It will never fail. Hallelujah. And I'm taking my time today. Amen. People God will bring in your life. So the quotation we just read, Jacob sent Joseph and said, Joe, go take food to where? Your brothers. Joseph was a very fast guy. He was fast in dreams. He was fast in interpreting dreams. He was a young guy. He can move fast. And he moved from the valley to Shechem. But when he got to Shechem, he couldn't find the brothers. His father says that they are where? Shechem. He got there timely. He could not find his brothers. Sometimes in the transitional of life, you go to a point where you don't find the next direction to take. <laughs> we have people who are experiencing what we call empty nest. They don't know what to do after all the children left home. We have people when they retire, they don't know what life is for them. In fact, there are some children after high school, in fact, some children when they go to college, like one of my daughter has stayed there a little one year later because she wants to be sure. <laughs> she wants to be sure that the course she was taking, she would like it. Because there's, as a counselor, there are so many students who after high school, after college, says they need to go back because they, did, they weren't sure about the course they were taking. And sometimes in life, you get to a place where you can't seem to see where do I even go from here my husband has left my wife my wife left break up marriage I lost this job I lost this business and I'm not even sure whether this is the way to take or this is the way to take and you are alone in the bush yes. this is what happened to Joseph he was fast he had food he had assignment but he is lost and he's alone. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Take a look at Genesis 37 and verse number 13. One more time. Genesis 37. Look at verse number 13. I just like you to look. And Israel said to Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send thee unto them. And he said, Here am I. He said to him, Go, I pray thee, whether it's been well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word. So he sent him off, verse 15. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, What are you looking for? I'm going to share about five things here for you on the subject celebrating the people God brings in our life. The first one is that Joseph or the Amos, yes, he was wandering. Hello. He was wandering. The word wandering means you lose a sense of direction. Oh. Don't even know which way to go, yes, Pastor sir. Francis. You don't know whether the church should go this way should go that way. <laughs> you are faithful, Mr. Hughes. You are a lawyer. Yes. But after retirement, then what? <laughs> after retirement, what happens? You, you pray to God. You love God. You have come to a place. You have come too far to go back. Go back. Yes, 
People are looking up to you, Pastor Francis. People are looking up to your decisions. Joseph's father was waiting for an answer, but the guy to bring an answer, he is lost in the bush. <laughs> Preach, Dr. Kwame Frempong. What do you do when people are waiting for an answer, That's but you yourself, you are confused? <laughs> The guy he lost, and he wasn't lost in the city, in the bush. <laughs> lost in the bush, and uh, he was uh, alone. Oh, Mama ma, ma, ma is not there, father is not there. No, you are alone. But, but must, if you are lost in the night, my what do you do? Oh, my Lord. What do you do? What do you do? He was wondering, no sense of direction. It's not because you don't know, but you, have, you try this way, this it doesn't work. You try that way, you try this business, you go to Ghana, you go to Africa, you try, boom, it doesn't work. Hey, bang, it doesn't work. Go here, boom, it doesn't work. And are you, what? Hey! I'm dying, sister. I'm dying. And Joseph was tired. Oh, alone. He found himself between his brothers and his father. He couldn't find any direction. My wife, my wife used to call me and say, people will tell you, you don't know what you are doing. There are times you simply don't know what else to do. <laughs> there are times you just, you just, you just, you are, the Nigerians call it, tired. You are tired. Amen. You are tired. Not because you didn't try you. You try. So the first one is that he was, he had a, he lost. And let me tell you, for every next level of your life, you'll get here. <laughs> Where you don't know what to do. Every level of your life. You're going to get to a point where you almost feel like you've lost it. It happened to the Magi. Who went to look for Jesus? They were following the stars. Ah, they go to Jerusalem. They can't find the star. Hey, not in that place. Oh, that place, the devil is there. There's the devil in the camp. <laughs> the place where they couldn't find the star, and then they went to the Satan. They said, Satan, we're looking for Jesus. Hey, brother, this is a critical moment in your life. But they were lost. They couldn't find the stars. But thank God the stars appeared one more time. Amen. Your star will appear again. Give God some glory. Hallelujah to God. Your star will appear again. Your star will appear again. The dreams will come back again. The vision will come back again. Your star will appear one more time. Hallelujah to God. Star will appear. So the first one was that he was wondering. The second point I want to share is there was no one to talk to. <laughs> there comes a time, brother, there's no one to talk to. No one who can understand you. This is why when the angel came to Mary and she says, go to your cousin Elizabeth. Why? They speak one language. Both of them didn't. There's an older generation who couldn't have a child. A younger generation who had a child by the Holy Ghost. Both of them don't understand what's going on in their own lives. And sometimes you need people who understand each other so they can speak one, one, one language. But there are times that you feel so alone. And you cry in the night. One lady says, Pastor Kwame, I make good money. I got a good house. I'm lonely. I need a horse band oh. to enjoy life with me. I cry all night yes. and I am lonely. Right now in America, 70% of all churches are made up of singles. You know one of the, one of the problems? They are lonely. In fact, most churches don't even have any program for singles. Pastor Francis, you hear me? All the programs are for the married couples. And the people are lonely, Pastor Francis. <laughs> <laughs> and 
the people are lonely. <laughs> Sometimes, they know that sex before marriage is bad. But there are times the edge, Pastor Moss. Yes, sir. So strong, oh. Pastor, brother. So <laughs> Sometimes it's so strong, and they wish somebody would preach how to manage sexual pressure. That's what <laughs> people feel lonely in church, and when people are lonely, there's nobody to talk to. It is the most hardest place to be when you feel all alone. But I came by to tell somebody the days of being lonely is over. Hallelujah to God. God has a plan for your life. The third thing I want to pull up from this is, if you read the scripture, it looks like the man who was there found Joseph before Joseph even found him. But why did he delay for so long? Ah, you know you can lead me to a business. Why don't you tell me, Mr. Paul? Tell me, but the man waited for Joseph to to just spend the entire time wondering. Why? Sometimes we experience divine delays. Yes. And the person who can help you, Mrs. Mary Frimpong, he or she is close by you, but they are not connected to what to do right now, and you just feel like God has abandoned your life. Some people feel like, if God is with me, why am I going through this? Delay. A certain man was watching him. Why, why did he delay? Why? Why do we experience divine delay? I'm a good woman. Oh. Someone said, Pastor Kwame, I can be a good wife. I can't find the right husband. And, and I don't understand. I'll talk about why the delay. But next question. But who is this man that made Joseph? <laughs> who is he? This man was who made Joseph? Hmm? Who is he? Where did he come from? Hmm. <laughs> who sent him there, Mr. Emoto? Who put him in the path of Joseph at the time he needed somebody? God will place people across your path at the time you feel so lonely. Give God some glory. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Amen. God knew that Joseph would find himself alone and he placed this man in the, in the, in the place. One way to look at that God is faithful in your life. Take a look and see the different times God has put people across your path at the sensitive moment of time, at the critical moment of Amen. time. Hallelujah. Theologians argue, some people feel like this guy was Gabriel, the angel. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Who sent him there? Nobody knew. How? What, what is his name? We say it's a certain <laughs> we don't even know who his name is. God will place a certain man and a certain woman in your path. When you get there, they will be there waiting for you to do something significant in your life. When I take a good look at my own life, I have, I can't even count, oh, I have lost count of different times in my life that God has placed many, many different people to do something for me at the time I most need them. God is faithful. He will always supply what you need at the time you need it. Hallelujah to God. He will always supply. Hmm. What was his assignment he said young man what are, are you, you looking for 
<laughs> my father sent me to go and bring food. My brother. I can't find them. And the man says, I heard. Hey, Jesus is Lord. Hey, hallelujah. He said, I heard them talking about something. Yes. Some people have key information that will change your life at the time you need them. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. They got some key, critical key information that you need that key right now. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. He says, I heard. I heard. Mate. And he was go put him there mm -hmm. to deliver a key information for Joseph because he needed that for his next level. I came to make a prophecy. Okay. At the time you need something, God will position someone who has the key information for you. Because sometimes Google won't give you the wife you need. Yes. Yahoo will be tired for you. <laughs> Facebook. I don't know whether to call it Facebook or Facebook. <laughs> he said, I heard. He, Brother Paul, why did he hear that information and was waiting for Joseph to get there so he would pass it on to Joseph? But why did he delay? Please listen to me carefully. The brothers of Joseph are planning to kill Joseph. And the plan was that as soon as they see him, they will do what? They will kill him. Joseph doesn't know that. Sometimes God will delay yes. you yes. to protect your life from the enemy. Yes. Give God some glory in the house. Hallelujah. God will delay you so he will protect you. It is not every delay is not the devil. In African people, everything is the devil. And I am tired. Yes, sir. <laughs> Some doings is God own yes, sir. doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This one, he delayed Joseph. Why? Because God had some people called Arameans or Ishmaelites. They are on their horse coming to get Joseph out of the pit. But if Joseph got there too fast, hallelujah no. to God. Hey, 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 hey. God had to slow him down, waiting for the people to get there. Time is very, very sensitive to God. Hello. So, although he had information, heaven says, don't give it weight. <laughs> because God is waiting for the Ishmaelites to get there before Joseph got there. So, by the time Joseph got there, there were about two, three minutes for the Ishmaelites to do what? To get there. When Joseph got there, Immediately, they took his food, but they put him in the pit to die. But the Bible says they lift up their eyes and they Ishmaelize. Oh, today, I tell somebody, your Ishmaelites are on their way. Your Ishmaelites are on their way. Your Ishmaelites are on their way. And they are coming with a smell, a, sense, a smell, perfume yes. to make you smell good. Yes. The smell of death will change, yes. and you're gonna smell good. They are coming today. Yes. Hallelujah! Give God some glory today in the name of Jesus Christ. They are coming. They are coming. In the year 20, 2000. One, my wife and I went to North Carolina. We were tired. Life was tough, Mr. Yes. Moss. I have never sold a car before, but I went to Honda dealership in Raleigh that I said, I, I'm, I'm a good man. But <laughs> 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 I don't know how to sell cars. 
I didn't even know the difference between Honda and Toyota. My wife was actually teaching me the difference. They trained me three times. I didn't say one car. <laughs> what was even shocking for the Jima was that there was one Muslim with us, the Muslim guy. But the Jima, I spoke in tongues, too, and I paid my tithe. I couldn't sell the car. And the Muslim guy was selling 30 cars a month. Something about this is not God, God, why? But, but God, God cry, why God? And one day the guy called me, my, my boss said, Call me, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to fire you. <laughs> <laughs> then he gave me 80 dollars. And then he made me preach for his church. Can you imagine? <laughs> so so he fired me. So I said, okay, if you have fired me, I need promotion. So they said, okay, go do car wash. So I was promoted from sales guy to car wash. Amen. My wife is here. You, you, every time, I'm not, I'm not making things up. In Raleigh, North Carolina, I was, doing, I was washing cars. And I was crying sometimes. Hey, calling Pani. What a calling of God. <laughs> calling of God. And because the money was very small, one day, my wife always asked me one question. My brother, he says, have they put the eviction notice on the door? I said, me, why are you looking for eviction notice? I know we haven't paid for two months, but I'm tired. But you are, you are expecting eviction notice. Can, can you just even, let's just trust God because this eviction notice thing, and boom, they post it there. So, because we couldn't find a place to stay, we were living in Maybrook Road Baptist Church. We slept in that church for three weeks with two children. It was like twice this church, and we would sleep in that church all day. Because it was two months after 911. There was no job in the country. There was a church of God close to Raleigh, and I always tell my wife, one day, I'll go to this church. God will put Yes. I went to that church second week of January 2002 not knowing that there was a prophecy made unto one white family yes, that God will bring an African family to you yes, this year yes, for you to take care of their life oh people God will put people in your path I'm telling you today yes, sir. I, I, I went to that church yes sir Second week of January 2002. And the guy said that he heard a voice, look back. I was the only black in the church. He looked back and God says, the guy is here. And he came to me at a church. He says, my name is David. If push comes to shove, talk to me. That English, you know, I've never heard it in my entire life. <laughs> If push comes to shove, is that how we say it? I don't know what it means. So I came home after church and I told my wife, I said, I met one, one guy. He says, if push comes to shove. My wife said, go and call him that push has already come. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Push has already come to God. Hallelujah to God. Push has already come. Now, 10 days before we have to be evicted from the apartment. It's a 400 me book road. One day I was doing car wash when my wife told me, five white men have come to the house and they have taken everything us to somewhere. And they said they gave us address. The white men had bought a house for me free of charge. Yes, sir. God will put people in your path. God will bless people in your path. I'm telling you, hallelujah. Yes, God. God will put people in your path. I went to him and I said, brother, I'm tired. I don't want mortgage. He said, shut up. God told me to take care of you. Give God some glory in the house in the name of Jesus. 
And my wife is here. Hallelujah to God. God will place people in your path. At the time, you must need it. 1996, I came to Virginia. Mr. Hughes, I went to pray in the funeral service and I met Mr. Too. And we started Sunday morning, Friday night in his house. Then one day, I went to look for insurance company. Mr. Hughes, do you remember? God put you in my path and you ask me, say, brother, what are you looking for? Like Joseph. And I said, I'm looking for insurance companies. And you drove me to the place and drove me home. We sat in the car talking. Then you mentioned the church of the living God. First time I have heard that church in the car. God place him in my path. And he introduced me to Sister Grace Dabo. She last, she last moment, and she introduced me to two fathers in my life. Yes, understand? I never had a father. Yes, you told me. Pastor Jima and Pastor Jamie. Yes, came into my life immediately. Give God some glory in the house, because God put somebody. I have a lot to share, but time is going in my path. At that time, we didn't know this crowd. Who. It was a destiny conversation. When you look at your lives, when you take a look at your life, God places people, Pastor Jima, at different seasons yes, sir. <laughs> in your life. Yes, sir. And they will do certain significant things in your life. The day I met Brother Hughes, yes, we call him Uncle Hughes at the time, like they, they were saying, he said so much about this church. We didn't know, and then you had a, a vision for me in the car. We sat in front of Brother Amos, 443 four, four, three, for Scarborough Square. 443 to Scarborough Square. God will put people. A certain man found you. My prayer is that you will meet your a certain man today. You will meet your a certain man next week. You meet your certain man this week. You meet your certain man this year. You meet your certain man now in the name of give God some glory. Hallelujah to God. You will meet them. Hallelujah to God. There are <laughs> some of the people that will meet in your life. The moment they come into your life, you have a sense of destiny. Some people, when they come into your life, immediately you have support. See, that certain man provided direction to Joseph. Within a minute, he found his brothers. But if he hadn't met that individual, he would still be there and be eaten by an animal. And then African people say, it's spiritual. <laughs> but the second people God will use are people who will lift you from the pit. The Midianites and they come in companies and the very moment they could have 
killed Joseph. They showed up. There's something about God that's amazing, Pastor Jim, very powerful, amazing. I don't understand it all. I don't. Maybe one day I will crack the code, but for now I don't understand. Eliezer is praying for a wife for Isaac. He said, Lord, let the, the woman who comes here and who, feed, who get water for my camels be the one you have prepared for who? For my master who? Then he said, before I finish praying, Rebecca, hey, so before I finish the prayer, hey, Jesus is Lord. I mean, I haven't prayed, I'm still praying now. And God, I pray for you. You, don't have, you have no idea. I pray that this week, before you finish your prayer, God will have brought the answer to you. Amen. That's what happened to you. But let me share with you these things and I'm going to get ready to close. Signs that God has sent people in your life. Five signs. Number one, the people coming to your life bring clarity to your life and they remove confusion if you're going to if you're here and you, are, you want to marry and anybody that you want to marry if they bring too much confusion brother Hughes pray more <laughs> pray more because when God send people your way they will bring clarity. They will help you have a sense of purpose. They will help you read your Bible, go to church, know God, have a dream. They don't come and take away. They come and bring increase into your life. Number two, when God brings people in your life, they lift you up. <laughs> How many of you are singles here in the house? Single people, let me see your hand. <clears throat> Thank you. No, don't, don't worry. Hey, I see one man here. You, I'm going to find somebody to marry, okay? You cannot be here. Okay, okay. So, so they come, they lift you up. <laughs> when God brings people in your life, number three, they support the grace of God on your life. See, Joseph, Potiphar, Potiphar saw that everything he does was blessing. He said, you are in charge of this house. They open doors because they saw God's grace. They don't pull you down. They lift you up. It's a different kind of PhD. PhD. Pull him down. <laughs> Syndrome. But they will lift you up. Number four, they open doors for you. And number five, they come into your life to serve as God's Visitation. Let me let me tell you something. God's visitation. But yes, sir. when Joseph was going to die, mm -hmm. he told Israel, he said, God will definitely visit you. But when the time came for God to visit, he sent a man called Moses. Some people in your life right now are agents of God's visitations. <laughs> Some people in your life, they are agents of God's visitation. Six months ago, after I got my PhD and I got my license as a clinician in Georgia, I needed to get my client entail, get the client. I spent about $700 on Facebook, social media, getting clients. I got nothing, just zero. One day, I went to a company by the name of Better Help Therapy. Maybe some of you know that. And I went to their community and I sent an email about the question I ask. It has nothing to do with clients. A woman who is about 80 years old, Sister Paulina says, Dr. Kwame, send me an email. Brother Paul, I sent her an email and my life was changed that week. Completely changed. With clients I couldn't have time for. Here's my wife. Just one person I met on that place. God will place people in your life that will make a difference in your life. Hallelujah to God. Just be faithful. Be loyal. But the Hughes, you are loyal. You have been faithful. I will change your name and make your name Hughes Faithful. Amen. 
But brother, brother, he was in closing. Let's read Psalm 92. I will take five minutes and uh, this is what I'm going to share is for Pastor Minister Hughes. This is Psalm 92. Let's turn to Psalm 92 and I'm going to close. Psalm 92. Psalm 92. And verse number 12. Psalm 92. Look at it. Let's read together. Ready, go. Like a palm tree. They will grow. Planted. They will still bear fruit. They will stay. Mr. Hughes, this word is for you and you alone. You shall flourish like a palm tree. And I want to encourage Pastor Jima at the same time. Pastor Jima, you will flourish like a palm tree. One thing about palm tree is that the older the tree, the sweeter the fruit. Hey! Amen. Hallelujah! The older the tree, the sweeter the fruit it bears. So as we get older, we become sweet, we become more matured, and we bear fruit, and our fruit will never lose in this season. Mr. Hughes, you have no business getting worried because your latter end, God will bite in your, your, your latter end and make you fruitful. Hallelujah to God. Mr. Hughes, in this season, God wants you to pour into the life of the next generation. There's a psychologist by the name of Eric Erickson, Mr. Toe. He propounded a theory that there are eight stages of life. Please, everything I have said today, don't forget what I'm going to say. He said there are what? Eight stages. The first one is called trust versus mistrust. Every child, when the child is born, learn trust. And then the child concludes, the world is safe. Ha! Ha! Mama, 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 come up. The child is learning that the world is in a safe place. But the last stage, we call it integrity versus despair. What it means is that at the end of your life, you will look back in either regret or you look back and then you are fulfilled because you felt you lived fully to God. In my clinical work, Mr. To, I have often asked people to do something. And I'd like you all to do that. Please, everybody close your eyes if you can. Imagine God gave you 102 years old. You are, you are, you are right now 102 years old. And I'd like you to look at your life. Look back and see if you are fulfilled or regret. What do you wish you saw if now you are 97? You can open your eyes. Let me tell you something. The most important thing to God is how you invest to the life of others. Psychologists all agree that one of the most effective means to overcome depression and anxiety is when you do goodness. Thirty years from now, the shoe I'm wearing doesn't matter. The people will tell me that this shoe, they don't want to wear it. <laughs> Pastor Francis, I don't care the car you are riding. Twenty years from now, that car is just, it's just it's a junk. That, that generation, they don't like it. This suit, they'll tell you it's old-fashioned. But what we did for people will never be old-fashioned. At 96, when I look back in my life, 
You know what I want to see? I want to see that, may, that through me, people have established quality relationships. When I look back, I want to see the marriages that came across my life are better. But the question is, when you look back, what do you see? Moses' parents, when they saw the child was godly, they saw something. How far do you see? And at 92, when you look back, Brother Hughes, this chapter, God wants you to invest to the generation. Your decision brought the child of the living God in Virginia. And it's not over yet. God is counting on you for this generation that the wisdom you have and the fruit you have, and the maturity that you pour into your life. Shall we stand? I preach only 10%. I didn't want to take too much time. Can I make an altar call? Can we close our eyes? But, Pastor Jim, can we pray for Minister Hughes? Is that possible? Please, can, can, yes, thank you, Pastor Jim. Can we get a chair and bring Uncle Hughes and uh, Mrs. Mrs. I still remember the preaching you preached on tree, tree service uh, about three years ago. God bless you. Please give us a song. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights. I'm gaining. Oh, mm -hmm. Pastors, Pastor Francis, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Can you all come and? The upward way. Say most. Elders, deacons. Every day. Slow it down. Worship time.
Touch, 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 touch. Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Lord, I am praying for your touch. I am praying for your touch, your divine touch, your healing. Touch this body, touch this eyes, restore this eyes, restore, 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 restore. Do a surgical operation that only God can do. Touch your servant. Touch your servant, touch your servant, touch your servant in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in this chapter, in this season, Lord, let him become fruitful. Make him like a palm tree. Everything about him will bear fruit. For your name, in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Can I ask Pastor Fran Francis Jima to lay your hands, man of God, and, and bless the servant of God? Hey. In the name of Jesus.
So my eyes are closed. I can, can I see your hand up? So I just need direction. I need purpose. I don't want to fight a mess. I want to make sure that I'm fulfilling God's plan for my life. That at 92, I will not regret anything. I lived. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for us today. As you drop this certain man in the path of Joseph, cause us to cross path with people of destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Kwame, for blessing us. Amen. One thing that I took from him is says, if you want a lasting recognition, in my own words, from my understanding, sow it, sow into the life of somebody. Hallelujah. So with that, there is a gift box back there where our day is videotaping. Whatever that you brought as a gift to Minister Hughes, you can leave it out there, right? And drop it in a box, amen? So into someone. That's one of the blessings that I learned. And another, uh, another thing is, there will be meals prepared for everybody exiting the building after church service, amen? So like Pastor Francis said last week, uh, Easter time, he says, I will not let you be here long without feeding you, amen? You're going to be fed, hallelujah? And lastly, for those who um, have the invite to go downstairs, please um, make your way down there. We're going to sit with the family, and, you know, that's when you get to socialize and get some more wisdom. Remember how he said, the more they age, the sweeter it comes, right? The more the tree, or how old the tree is, the few, sweeter the fruit, right? There's another one that says, the black of the berry, the sweeter the juice. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, that's the young people term right there. So <laughs> with that, I'm going to call on uh, Elder Eric Ampau. Uh, there he is. Okay. He's going to give a brief announcement. And media team, please uh, prepare the general announcement. Amen. Followed by the LOV, uh, Dr. Jimma and her crew. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It looks like we are not going home today, but we will. We thank the Lord so much for Minister Hughes. I call him uncle. I call him uncle, meaning uncle. I call him uncle. And he's coined a way to make it easier, so he also calls me uncle to make it sweet, right? Um, I'm here representing the intercessory prayer team. Uh, Elder Paul, can you please come? Mama, can you please come? And all the intercessory prayer uh, members, can you please be on your feet? Can you please be on your feet? You know yourselves. Please, please, let's be quick. Our time is fast gone. Please be on your feet. Um, where is Sister Benice and where are the rest? Dr. Samba, where are you? Where, are, where is everybody? Okay. We have a present. This man has led us for years. He has represented us, and not just us, the church. These are the people who dedicate themselves to pray for the church and pray for the church members every 5 a.m. to 6. Sometimes we go as far as 6.30, 6.15. Every single day, five days a week, and also in the afternoon at 12. Minister Hughes has led this group faithfully. Amen? And so we want to honor him on behalf of the church because this is a family that is representing the church. Amen? These are the people who are on the walls of the church praying for the members of the ministry that the church will stand, that the work of God will move on. Amen? We have this plaque for him and I'll hand it over to Brother Paul, to read what he says. Praise the Lord, everyone. Oh, man, this is not a cemetery. Praise the Lord! My goodness. 
better be alive in the house of God. It is where people live. It isn't where people die. People live here, you understand? Anyways, congratulations on my years of outstanding service. I'm reading from the black now. If you hear me, say amen. You have been a great leader to the CLG Nova Prayer Warriors. Your dedication and commitment encourages us. Oh, I am encouraged by this man of God. He's a pillar, pillar to the house of God. Oh, the Lord through him said something to me one day. And all it was is a good man leaves a good legacy for his children and his children's children. And so him being a pillar simply means that he's transferring and transmitting power to those that he comes in contact with. Some are young and some are not so young. But we're getting it because he's a pillar to the house of God. So may your reward be full from the Lord as this chapter of your life ends. May a new and exceptional one begin. All glory and honor belongs to Jesus. If the hands are yours, do it. Do it and do it some more. Praise the Lord. A lot have been said about Minister Hughes, but I have only one word. He is the hermit of this church. If you know what her hermits are, they live a life of seclusion, praying, seeking the face of the Lord for nations, for cities, for people, and that's what this man is. So that's all I have for him. May the Lord increase you. You are starting, he's not retiring. It's a new chapter in his life. I know him. He will just take a break and he will jump right back. So, Minister Hughes, you are not retiring. Just like the Bible said, you are a priest after the orders of Melchizedek forever. So you will never retire. May the Lord bless you. Amen. 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 We have a Bible verse for you that says, he says, from your prayer, intercessory prayer group, family. And the Bible's verse is Ruth chapter 2 and verse 12. And it says, May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. God bless you. We have Pastor K.O. Jima give a tribute. the Lord. The time is fast spent, and my angel is uh, who gave me 10 minutes. And so, my angel, if I can uh, meet the 10 minutes, thank you. If I go over it, please. All right, but uh, beloved, I am to pay tribute to a man that somehow I had known since 1968. He knew me, he saw me, but I couldn't recognize him. So I call him Minister Hughes, 
the man with a retentive and a sharp memory. That's my first yes, important words that I want you to know. Now someone may ask why I'm describing Minister Hughes with such a conviction. And my answer is that sometime in 1990, Mr. Hughes, who at that time everyone called him Brother Hughes, walked to me at CLG Highsville and said, do you know that I know you? That was in 1990. So you know me? She said, yes, I know you. I said, where do you know me from? I don't know you. He said, I know you from Dansuma. You're old Dansuma. I know you from Pastor Belfi's church. I know you are the inner temple of Christ. I said, yes, I remember. I was the person worship leader there, but how do you know me? See, don't you remember some boys who come to just mess you up in the church? When any time you were leading devotion and uh, the women were going like this, and so don't you remember some, some boys who came there and imitate the woman and they were dancing and going round, 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 round? I said, yes, I do remember, but I don't know you. I don't remember you. He said, I know, I remember you. So I, because I used to come there and mess up all the time with your church. But I remember that time. That's why I call him a man with a, a very retentive and sharp memory. For 22 years, Father, I didn't, I didn't even bother. What, what, yes, he came to make rough in the church, but I didn't pay much attention. We just prayed for him. But he remembered. And that reminded me also in my own time when I was also going around in a salam down making all kind of silly things in the streets when I didn't know the Lord. And so there was no condemnation at all. And number two, Minister Hughes, the man with a faithful and committed heart. You are very faithful and you are committed to whatever that God has asked you to do, you will do it. Why do I say that? Minister Hughes was one of about 120 members of the Calvary Baptist Church choir that were stranded in the U.S. in 1987 for lack of funds to charter an airplane to fly them back to Accra. They had become stranded. I had almost about nine of them living in my home. They needed $100,000 to send them back home. So I was leading them going from church to church raising funds. And all our members raising funds for them to send them back home. But this man remembers. I said there were 120 of them. And by the grace of God, we were able to raise money and send them back home. Not thinking that they will, some of them will come back. And then in 1990, here comes back Mr. Hughes. And with many of the Calvary about teachers, remember who were sent home, they came and they resided in Highsville around the Church of the Living God. And many of them joined the choir. And then that was a time Mr. Hughes voluntarily committed himself teaching the Sunday school. Way back then, for almost 16 years, he didn't pay him a dime. Why at that time, 
He was even struggling to find a job. But yet he committed to teach our Sunday school kids at the Church of the Living God. That's why I call him a man who is faithful and committed. He's faithful to what the Church of the Living God did for them. Otherwise, they would have stranded and have nowhere to go. Imagine nine people living in my house, 15 people living in Pastor Jimmy's, Pastor Jimmy's house and all that. But he remembered and he came back to serve in the church. Mr. Hughes, thank you. And many people remember. My own child, Linda Jima, remembers you because you came back and be faithful in the church. And as I'm talking, to you, with all that we did, the children of Vingo Calvary Baptist Church, I cannot count it, not, not even five people in the children of living God. Here in Nova, I can count only two people. Mr. Hughes and Brother Lally Soboda. Unfortunately, he's sick. But Mr. Hughes, you have been faithful here from, Harris, from Harrisville and here in Nova. And I thank God that you have been committed. You committed your life when we didn't pay you anything. But God took over your life. Number three, Mr. Hughes, a man of prayer and solid faith. Well, if you are going to ask anything, he has to pray. If he doesn't get an answer from God, forget it. Not until he gets answers from God, and then he will be able, he will say, Yes, this is what God says. But why do I say that? When he did not know that I was considering employing him to assist me in running the Nova branch, he was fully confident by a revelation he had received from the Lord of the Kwame that I will employ him. Yeah. At this time, he had lost his gainful employment for almost about seven months. I didn't know. I didn't know. I had no idea. But he was hiding, hiding in his house praying and the Lord told him, I will hire him. Yeah. Ah! And as I said, I didn't even know that he has lost his job. Yes? Mm -hmm. From where you were working? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And that's why I call him a man of prayer and solid faith. And as I was planting up, just, just trying to find a means to have him employed, and I was defending my reason for employing him, Minister Hughes, at that time, Brother Hughes, and I was defending the reason why I should hire him to Pastor Jame. Because Mr. Hughes says he's an evangelist. Ah. So Pastor Jame said, Kwasi, we don't hire evangelists. Then why do you want to hire evangelists? So while I was defending my reason of hiring evangelist, Amen. not knowing he was praying. Yes, sir. 
a man of prayer and solid faith. Now listen. The next one also probably is that Mr. Hughes, a man that always stuck to what thou said the Lord. Let me repeat. Mr. Hughes, the man that always stuck to thou said the Lord. If God has not said it, forget it. Again, why am I saying that about Mr. Hughes? When I was hopelessly defending my reason for employing Mr. Hughes as an evangelist, he was calmly waiting for the fulfillment, for the manifestation of his dream that I will employ him. So in May 22nd, 2006, the late General of the Reverend S.K. James, Stephen K. James, made a final decision to employ Minister Hughes. Please remember that Mr. Hughes was at that time addressed as Brother Hughes. So, let me quote what the late general of the sea, Reverend Stephen K. Jeme, wrote. Quasi, according to the CLG job description, as summarized in the organization structure, handed out to our recent pastors, pastors' conference, his job description falls under the duties of the minister of outreach pastoral care I would therefore recommend this his position be changed from evangelist to minister of outreach or minister of past pastoral care while he was praying calmly I was struggling and, and Mr. Reverend Jamie then agreed and he was employed. Mr. Hughes, the man of faith. That's my last one. Mr. Hughes, the man of faith. Mr. Hughes' dream of being employed came to pass. Therefore, the late General of Asia, Reverend S.K. Jamie, S.K. Jamie, said, going forward, Brother Hughes will no longer be addressed as Brother Hughes, but Minister Hughes. And the following areas will be under his responsibilities. So while he was praying and, and just waiting for that said the Lord, Pastor Jeremy made the final decision. And my defending him again, I get, I get approval. I said, God, thank you. And so these were the responsibilities that Pastor Jeremy laid down. Women follow up and visitation. And you know, Pastor Mr. Hughes, visitation, wherever you are, he will come there. And then he also missing in action or backsliders outreach. He will be in charge of that and then he will go round and round trying to find out why you are not coming to church. A man follow up and visitation was also under him. Cell group set up and meetings. You remember when we had a cell group? It's only me. I believe uh, Kopepe alone uh, I think Kopepe know uh, that at the toe, your area Gainesville. It's only Gainesville that still have the third group. And thank God. Don't freeze us. The office also has it. And so this way, where the place that uh, Mr. Hughes tried going back and forth and praying with them. Local evangelist outreach. New members of orientation and first time visitors outreach. All were under him. He will come to your church First time visitors, you'll be praying and praying from Tuesday all the way through Friday. He'll be in the church. Because we didn't have uh, what do you call, uh, what do you call, administrative secretary, whatever. So he became a minister of outreach, 
administration uh, outreach also, and in the office and praying for the church. And if you remember, COVID came. And when COVID came, prayer is the one that sustained us. And who was in charge? Minister Hughes. And many other things, Mr. Hughes, that God has used you to do. Indeed, Mr. Hughes has been very faithful in discharging his duties as listed above as much as he could. At the time he was healthy, he missed several visitations, both in the homes and in the hospitals. One area that we all shall remember him is the prayer warrior department. It has come to stay and is going and is strong. Thank you, Minister Hughes, Amen. for your humility, your calmness, but forceful in dealing with the works of darkness. It is my prayer and the prayer of all the saints that the Lord restores your sight as quickly as possible. Amen. And even at the retirement, would you and I as retired, but we are not retired. As long as by the grace of God, we have the voice to speak. Yes. Mr. Hughes, would you please stand up for me? Hallelujah. Would you lead him here for me? of you that you would do. So you have done it. You have restored his eyesight. And we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give God a clap of faith. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. We have come to the tail end of the program before the media team gives the announcement and we're going to do our tithes and offering. Those who are invited to go downstairs, please move your cars to the back. Amen? We have a Spanish congregation that will be coming at 3. Okay? So those invited, move your cars to the back. And if you are not, you have food to take home, there's no reason to sit there and chit-chat. Amen? Free up that parking spot so that our brethren can come as well. Hallelujah. So with that, um, media team, please announcements.
Good afternoon, church. Please take note of the following announcements. True Bible Studies continues to focus on the book of Luke and meets every Monday on Zoom from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Missions. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. The first three Sundays of the month is for our worldwide missions offering of $10. The fourth or fifth Sunday of the month will be for our local missions offering. Each month we'll be celebrating the gift of life. Therefore, if you're born in the month of April, please send your name and date of birth to Deaconess Josephina Jima via text so that we may celebrate you. The Men of Valor Bible Reading Challenge continues throughout this month. Please join them this coming Saturday where they meet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please review the spreadsheet and pick a 30-minute slot in which you will join them in reading the Bible. For more information, please see Brother Tim. Dr. Mary Samba will be presenting Creation Life, Health, and Trust this coming Wednesday, April 10th at 7 p.m. To join, please see the Zoom link that we posted within the ministry chat. For more information, please contact Dr. Mary Samba. We are all called to rescue the perishing and care for the dying. This coming Friday, April 12th, we will be having our salvation service from 7.30 to 9 p.m. to pray for the salvation of our family, friends, and neighbors. Our theme for the service is, Ye shall be saved in your house, taken from Acts 16, verse 31. Ladies and young girls, it is that time again to dress up and wear your most stylish hat for LV's annual Hats and Style event. The theme for this year is floral and will take place on Saturday, April 13th from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. here at the church. The event is free, so please sign up to come play games, enjoy floral art creations, and win great prizes. You're all cordially invited to the baby dedication ceremony of Mr. and Mrs. Adesoye's handsome baby boy, Adriel Adefalankumi Adesoye. The dedication will take place on Sunday, April 14th, here at the church. A luncheon will follow at the Adesoye's residence. The health ministry team are asking all members to join them next Wednesday, April 17th on Zoom from 7.30 to 8.30 for their presentation on self-advocacy. Come learn and be more informed on how to advocate for yourself when you are dealing with health professionals. The Men and Women Fellowship will have a joint field trip to the National Museum of African American History and Culture on Saturday, April 20th. Those attending need to arrive at church at 9.30 a.m. prompt to board the bus. All those who would like to join, please sign up on the sign-up sheet. Children are also welcome. Prayer for the last Sunday of each month. In aligning with our theme of 2024, we'll have our one-week prayer service for the month of April starting Monday, April 22nd through Friday the 26th. Please plan to join us on Zoom from Monday to Thursday for prayer services and on Friday please plan to be at church where we'll come together to conclude the prayer week. We will be having our next cell group meeting on Sunday April 21st from 7 30 to 9 p.m. on Zoom. Please continue reading with chapter 3 of The God Chaser in Philippians chapter 3 and prepare for a great discussion. Youth and young adults, please prepare yourself for the annual Core and Rooted Joint Summer Retreat. This year, it will take place from July 10th through the 13th at the Concord Retreat Center in West Virginia. The theme of the retreat will be the potter and his clay derived from Jeremiah 18 verses 1 to 6. The price for the month of April is $170. Please make sure to pay before it goes up to $250 in the month of May. Please check the ministry chat for more details and send proof of payment to Sister Stephanie Abbey or Sister Louisa Sarr. Just like last year, y'all do not want to miss out on this great encounter. This is a friendly reminder for the leaders of the Marriage and Family Committee, Good News Ministry, and the Youth and Young Adult Ministry to send articles to Deaconess Josephina Jima for May's edition of our Triumph newsletter. Church, we want to hear from you. CLG is looking to launch a new website and we need your valuable feedback. You can access a survey by scanning the QR code or through the link on the WhatsApp platform. Paper copies will also be available on the back table. Please take this survey. If there are any questions, please see Brother Cujo Seodor. All friends and sympathizers are invited to the celebration of life for beloved mother of Elder Frank Usher. 
The final funeral rites will take place on Saturday, April 27th from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. here at the church with a Thanksgiving service to follow on April 28th. For additional information, please see the flyer posted in the ministry chat. God loves a cheerful giver. How do I give? You can give you online on the link you can find on the church's website, by mail, in person every Sunday, Zelle, Venmo, or a cash app. If you have any trouble, please find an usher who will be happy to guide you through the giving options. Have a blessed Sunday filled with love, laughter, and happiness. Praise the Lord. Like I mentioned, uh, Minister Hughes is one of the coolest um, men he's met, right? He has style. So with that, we have the LOV coming out, walking with your nice hats to give us an announcement. Amen? Hats and style. Hallelujah. A round of applause for them. They're looking really good. Amen? Even clap further. Come on. Hallelujah. It takes a long time to weave a hat. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Kristen Jima. I'm the current president, and we are the Ladies of Virtue. Uh, we have a quick announcement. I want to thank our pastors for allowing us the moment to present this announcement. And I will give it over to our Vice President Chelsea and our Secretary Ariana. Our Hats and Style event was established to bring all women and young ladies of the church together, have fun, and get to know ourselves. We invite all females to come in their fashionable outfits and hats on Saturday, April 13th, here from 12 to 3 p.m. This year, our theme is Blooming Florals. We encourage you to come in floral clothing to celebrate the beauty of spring. We will do arts and crafts connected to flowers as well as play games and other bonding activities. These activities include our runway modeling, show your style, where you proudly model your outfits, top with your hat. Oh, and we will also have food for you. We will also have prizes for the games, as well as the fashion show. This event is free. So please show up in your numbers, our women, our ladies, and our girls. This event will happen at 12 p.m. We will have a sign-up sheet going around if you'd like to do that way. And we also have a digital sign-up sheet going around in the church's WhatsApp chat. So please show up on Saturday, and let's fellowship with each other. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. It's time for praise. I mean, uh, tithes and offering. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's rise. Offering time. Offering time. No, you're not excited. Offering time. Offering time. Thank you. 
you here for four solid hours amen. amen but it's all good because you only retire once amen and you only get a chance to give God glory for the good things he has done amen how many of us can have an opportunity for someone to celebrate you for a job well done how many of us we want to thank the Lord for your presence amen we want to thank the Lord for you having an open heart a cheerful heart to come for us to celebrate the good things that the Lord has done in our life, in the life of our dear brother and minister, Hughes. May the Lord bless you. Nothing that your presence today has gone to waste. Please remember that. You may be tired, but God appreciates you. I know he appreciates, minister, he appreciates what you have done to the glory of our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our God, we thank you. For there's no one better to serve than you. And there's nothing better, Lord, but to be called by you. Your, you called your servant to follow you, Lord. In the moment of his life when he thought he had everything answered, he thought he knew what he was doing. 
and how his life was to turn out. But you found it fit, my God, to redirect him into a life of ministry. And to you, we give praise and glory. The lives that have been touched, the families that have been blessed, the ministries, Lord Jesus Christ, that have received your presence because of his faithfulness, we say thank you. We thank you for the, what you have done in this life and what you will continue to do in the years to come. We thank you for the offering that you have given us to give back to you. It was only possible, my Lord, because you gave us the strength to wake up and to go to work in order to earn a living to bring some into your storehouse. You said, Father, when we do so, you will bless us because we have brought it faithfully and cheerfully and that you will bless each and every person who did it 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. We say thank you, God, for you are a God who does not lie. We receive it right now in the name of Jesus. We pray as we're going to our various places, Lord, take us there safely. May holy angels protect us and watch over us, Lord, and no harm come nigh our way. That when we reach our destinations, we'll be careful to give you all the praise for you are a mighty and faithful God. We honor you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. together. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you.